hi and welcome to fluorescent today i am joined with paul mother who is a performance artist hello <laughs> hello and we're going to be talking all things performance art as part of our creatives in conversation series my first question is how would you describe your practice and what you do to me a few different areas of things that i do to which i'm not quite sure which i would say i do the most although i do performance art um, and that often ends up as an end result. I do a lot of drawing and writing that then informs the performance art. Um, but I would say mostly I start with writing or drawing. I think practice is like a difficult thing to describe because it's very dependent on your situation and you constantly have to adapt what you're doing. I would just describe my practice as doing what I would like to do uh, wherever possible and wherever not possible, trying to run off things I've already done. Some people will work 24 seven, seven days a week and constantly be putting out stuff and it's all great. And then some people will do like one thing every month and it's still great. So I think mine is sort of a bit between those. Some of the main themes, I think initially everyone would take up the theme of like gender and motherhood, which I think is quite present. And then a lot of people said nostalgia and dark nostalgia, which I'd never thought about at all. Never even thought that was a thing. But I guess I do include quite a lot of childhood type things, but also brands. Like I tend to put a lot of things like Kellogg's or um, crisps, that kind of thing. So then I think it, with the content turns it to like dark nostalgia is the way people have described it. Um, I think exploration of the self, um, and I think motherhood and poor mother encapsulates all of those themes. I make work under the artist name poor mother, but I think a lot of the work I make, I don't put myself in the position of poor mother when I make work. She just tends to be the vehicle for which I show the work. And how, how did you discover performance art, live art, all these different forms? Were they something that you've always been interested in or have they sort of evolved out of a different form. So I've been interested in acting and stuff for a long time but I hadn't really, I didn't know much about live art until like foundation year. Um, so during foundation year I think it was that I was drawing a lot to do with babies and one of my tutors said oh you should do a performance about this and I'd never even thought of doing that before and I gave it a go and I think for me the reason it stuck was because I didn't really get bothered by it. Um, so it feels like performance art is kind of like a luxury for me because I think this would bother a lot of people. And I think a lot of people that like, do get nervous and do get nervous. It's just in some ways I prefer to do that than other things. Because it completely doesn't make sense as a student to do because it is the art career path that is guaranteed to make you the least money. <laughs> like <laughs> painting, sculpture will make you a lot more money than performance art because you can't sell a performance. You can in some ways, but you can't sell it like you'd sell a painting. True, like Paul Mother, you use it, the art form of drag. And I was wondering what drag means to you and how you use that in your work. Drag for me, it's meant a different thing for me through my whole process. So it didn't start off meaning the same thing that it means now. I think I started doing drag just because I'd been to a lot of drag shows and that kind of thing. And I started doing the makeup just because I enjoyed doing makeup. And then it became an easy way to sort of transition a character, like a performance character. Now, Poor Mother for me is very much a way to sort of tackle gender confusion and gender dysphoria within myself through a gender, an exaggerated gender that I don't feel comfortable in. But like I am comfortable in Poor Mother because that's the most like heightened feminine thing that I can be. But I find it, it's sort of an exploration of discomfort, um, but also being so heightened through drag that then it becomes very distant from myself. So it's something I can sort of dive into, um, be ultra feminine for a bit, because that is never something I feel like I want to do. Um, or feel comfortable in but through drag and through performance it feels like it's not something I want but it's also just something that's quite fun to do to sort of tackle the confusion and not even figure it out but inform yourself in a weird way drag makes everyone look at you and I'm not comfortable with everyone looking at me day to day but in drag I'm fine with it because it's, you're looking at a piece of 
artwork in the loosest terms. How do you use different, integrate different types of art practices in your work? Because I know you've said that you use poetry as well as drawing and painting and mm. drag as well. Like how does that all come together for you? It's difficult because when you've got like drawing, writing and performance going on, you don't really know which ones can stand by themselves. Like I've been told that some of my writing, it doesn't need to be performed, it can just be read. Um, but then it's like, where do I get the performance from? And do I do three separate things or do I try and figure them into one massive thing? But I think they inform each other through a lot of the drawings can capture uh, a more visual, what I'm calling surreality, which is like a mix of surreal and reality. The writing can capture a completely different sense of surreality because it's, it's it goes on in there. Um, and then a performance, it's a very physical thing. But I think performance, you're naturally being brought into a like participatory state to start with. What would your advice be for someone who's interested in getting into performance in live art, maybe people to have a look at or that kind of thing? I wrote down a bit of advice. I'd say just try it as the first thing, because I think so many people will plan a performance and talk about a performance and then not actually do it. And until you do it, you're never going to know what it's like until you actually, it's the same thing with painting, like you can plan it out, but you need to make a mark first and performance, you need to actually do it and practice doing it. And even if it's not, like I definitely fall into the thing of I plan something out and I will want to plan it meticulously and then do it rather than test it throughout. Because I think, oh, it's like, I, I always try and involve some sort of element of surprise or um, unexpected in it and that kind of it gets ruined when you practice it but I think you can practice it in a certain kind of way that maybe involves more participation before you finalize it if you're too scared to do it in front of an audience you can perform for a camera and then have that as a video of a performance and it's still a performance if you're interested in actually doing it as a profession sign up to e-digest which is like a newsletter uh, thing that sends out live art opportunities every week and also there's a place in London called the Live Art Development Agency. There's basically, a, it's a big library and they'll have these books, uh, collective sort of readings of performance arts that you can look up and it's free. You can just go and spend the day there. Don't risk hurting yourself. That's another tip. Because uh, I think everyone falls into that thing. of You know, if I do something a bit crazy, it will make it good. And I've definitely done that. I have been upside down and falling off things a lot and it didn't make for good work you know if you're really good at falling off things then go for it but don't do it just because you think it'll make it good because it it might not and it's not any good trying to risk your own health to get good art in terms of people's work who i would say to check out i would say victoria sin um because they are like my major inspiration and if you've seen my art you probably can see that they're my major inspiration. I would say in terms of classic performance art, Rebecca Horn, um, Marina Abramovitz, um, Cassille, who's um, doing a lot to do with making their body different. They do a lot of bodybuilding and stuff like that and their performances are really good. And then Bastian Ada as well is another one who was the one that made me think about falling. He basically falls off a load of things and then his last performance was him going off in a boat, um, but he died in at sea. Like with a lot of performance art, there's quite a romanticised history of it, of people putting themselves through a lot of stuff to get to an end point. And I'm kind of glad it's moved away from that now. My website is poor and then dash mother.com. Um, my Instagram is at poor underscore mother underscore. Um, and I tend to announce most of my performances on there. But I am <laughs> I'm selling t-shirts. If you'd like a t-shirt, uh, here is one I've made. Uh, they're oh, fruit. It's glorious. Um, I, there's have lots mine of design. The, I have mine ordered. Yeah, yours is on the way. My first batch of t-shirts are arriving today, so I should be able to get them out pretty soon. Um, if you'd like a poor mother t-shirt, they're going at the moment for 15 pounds hand drawn well that is all i believe that is all the questions that i have so thank you very much cool. for joining me no thank glorious. you so much for having me